So we all know the story of Daniel chapter 1. In case you don't know, let me summarize. When Daniel and his three friends, or rather before that, during the time of uh, King Jehoshakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. So they came to Jerusalem and they conquered Jerusalem. They plundered the land, took the royal and, and noble people from there, made them servants, and they took all the money, all the gold, all the silver and precious things from the temple and from the, uh, the, the city of Jerusalem. So when they came out, they took Daniel and his three friends. Later, I'll, I'll talk more about that. But the overview of the story was the servant, the, the, the chief eunuch, told them, you're going to eat the king's food. You're going to eat the king's wine. You'll have the best drinks. You'll have the best food. And Daniel refused. Remember the story? He said, I'm not going to eat this because this is not for me. This is not our tradition and all these things. And what did he do? He became vegetarian. Later, I'll explain why. But don't be vegetarian after this. Huh? <laughs> he became vegetarian. So after that story, he became vegetarian. And he told the chief eunuch, says, test us for 10 days. See if we are better than other people, all these people who are eating the same food as the king. And after that, 10 days after, the, the chief eunuch saw Daniel and his three friends and they looked better than those who are eating the king's food. And after three years of training them, you know what? The king, when they presented, when the chief eunuch presented Daniel and the three uh, Hebrew boys, you know what the king says? I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen uh, a group of people 10 times better, 10 times wiser, 10 times smarter. That's what the king said, you know. And, and, and this, is, this is a story that I'm going to share today. And what are, what are we going to learn from this? And what are the parallels that we can get from this? Because the picture of Babylon is a picture of the world. And Daniel being in Babylon is a picture of us being in the world, but not of the world. Can I hear an amen? amen? So later we will just go through the story. We'll go through the scripture. And I pray with all my heart that we'll get something out of this, that it will propel us to run faster for Jesus. Because church, time is running short. There's no time to, to be sad. Oh, no, I mean, we can be sad. There's, but there's no time to, to, to just look into yourself. Poor me, I'm going through this, I'm this and that. No, no, there's no time for that. Jesus is coming soon. Can you tell your neighbor Jesus is coming soon? Amen. Because if we always mind our own business, you know what? By the time we mind our business, Jesus comes already and it's too late. And as pastor, I don't want to see all of us to, at the, at the end of that line, Alama, I should have listened to Pastor Barnabas. Right? I should have listened to this prophet. I should have listened to Pastor James. No, no. As much as we can, we want to sound the alarm that Jesus is coming soon and God is preparing us not to be the best version of yourself, but to be like Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give a background of the story and we will go through the points of what can we learn from this. And I titled this message today, The Anointing of Dedication. The anointing of dedication. Because Daniel and his three friends from Jerusalem, they dedicated their life to God. Though they were at a different place, at a different time, they chose to dedicate their lives for Jesus. So question here, why were the Israel exiled from their homeland? Because in, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, can we go to... Daniel chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. In the third year of the reign of Jehoshakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. Verse 2. And the Lord gave Jehoshakim, king of Judah, into his hands with some of the vessels of the house of God, and he brought them to the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and placed the vessels in the treasury of his God. Okay, we'll stop here. So the question is, why did God allow Israel to be plundered and be conquered by Babylon? If, if Israel is, is God's um, city, if Israel is God's nation, how come he allowed them? You know why? Because of sin. 
because of sin. Because Jehoshakim and his son, who reigned very short time, did evil things in the sight of God. And, and, and that is something very scary. You know why? Because Jehoshakim, do you know his father? His father is Joash, King Joash. How many of you know King Joash? King Joash is the youngest king ever recorded in Israel. In the world, maybe I don't know, but he's the youngest king recorded in Israel. What did he do when he became a king? He destroyed idols. And then he got people to find the old scripture and they read the scripture in, in the city of Jerusalem because they forgotten what God said before. So King Josiah, he, he, he restored Israel. He restored the nation. But what did his son do? He did evil things, evil things. Second Kings, here you can turn the Bible, Second Kings verse 23, verse, uh, chapter 23, verse 37. This is King Jehoshakim. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord according to all that his fathers had done. This is King Jehoshakim. God, King Jehoshakim was taken captive by King Nebuchadnezzar who put him in chains and carted him off to Babylon. And I want us to, to, to listen to this. We may be promised children, right? You may have salvation today. You may have Jesus today. You may say, Jesus, I follow you. You are my God. You're my everything. You're my salvation and all that. But if we keep coming back to the world and doing evil things, you know what? God will let you go. In Romans chapter 1, if, if you know that scripture, there's a scripture there that when you don't change, when you've met God, you know what? He will let you go. You know why? For your salvation. It's not for you to, to, to die, you know. He allows us to go through the tests again so that we may meet Jesus again. In Jeremiah 25, 8 to 2, it says here, Therefore, thus, thus says the Lord of hosts, because you have not obeyed my word, behold, I will send for all the tribes of the north, declares the Lord, and for Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, may my servant, and I will bring them against this land and its inhabitants and against all these surrounding nations. I will devote them to destruction and make them a horror, a hissing, and everlasting desolation. You know, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Habakkuk, Micah, they've been sounding in Israel. If you don't repent, if you don't turn your ways, you know what? Babylon will come against you. Babylon will come against you. But you know what Israel did? They did not listen. They don't care. Many of us today, we, we might have received, maybe I would say warning or precaution. Some of us receive the word, oh, if you do this, please be careful. I've, I, I've advised people before, please be careful, don't do this, because this will happen to you. And you know what? Just after a week, something happened, accident. And, and it's very scary because God is a gracious God. But if, if we do not want to change, you know what's gonna, what God's going to do? He will give you up so that He will meet Him there. You have no choice. Sometimes, example, we, we don't want to be with God, we just want to do our own thing, and, and because of Whatever we're doing, we got sick, we, 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 we are admitted to the hospital, and you have no choice but to just be there, <laughs> lying down in, in a hospital bed, and God is reminding you, I, I just want you. Happened to me. When I was in the hospital, Jesus came to my, to my, after my operate, in the operating theater, and he, he told me, James, this is what I want you to know. Then I asked the Lord, why didn't you tell me this earlier? Because you don't want to be still. <laughs> And I, 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 we, let's not go through this, you know. When God says something, let's listen and let's run together. Amen. And, 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 the, and the scary thing was, these are the true prophets who are sounding the alarm, sounding the cry. If you don't repent, if you don't turn around, O king, Babylon will be against you. And there's plenty of warning against Singapore. Plenty of warning against the USA. Plenty of warning against big nations, but nobody listens. As, as, a, child, as, as a child of God, I think we, we know what's going to happen next, right? If righteousness is not established, you know what? Unrighteousness will always come up. 
But the good thing about this, let's have hope. The good thing about when unrighteousness climbs up, when evil comes up, you know what? The grace abounds. Amen. Very weak. Amen. 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 When we see more evil, it means there's more grace for you and I. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be sad. You shouldn't be afraid. Because when we see more evil, wow, thank you, Lord, more anointing, more grace for me to overcome, more grace for me to see what you see, more grace for me to say what you want me to say. Amen. Because Jesus said things will not be better, you know. Amen. Children against fathers, fathers against children, rebellion will come, and all these things are going to come to pass. And in the, in, in the book of Daniel, this is a picture of the end times. And this is a picture of our current situation today, that we're in the world but not of the world. So when they were plundered and, and, and they did not listen to the prophecy, then the Babylonians came to Jerusalem and conquered them. It's very sad. Daniel, I'm going to talk more about Daniel today. Daniel, if some of us may not know, Daniel is from the lineage of David. Can you imagine when Daniel was, was taken away from Jerusalem, he was taken of his rights. Listen to this. He was taken of his rights. He was taken of his royalty. He's, he's the lineage of David, right? He's, he's taken of his nobility. He's taken of all the privilege that he could have in Jerusalem. But that's Daniel. And we, we always admire him from afar. Wow, Daniel, who, who is a great guy, who's a top executive at, in the in a Babylonian uh, company. Right? Great guy, good guy, see visions, see dreams, see angel, see the future, can interpret dreams. But we, we, we don't pay attention to where he came from first. And a lot of times we want the anointing, we want to be used by God, but we do not want to go through tests and trials. And sometimes we get wrong advices from the wrong people. Amen. We go to the people who don't believe God. If you want a godly advice, go to godly people. Amen. If I need advice, I'll make sure I go to godly people. I don't go to any Tom, Dick, and Harry. They also give me Tom, Dick, and Harry answers. You know, so we want that. So, so you see, Daniel was robbed of his so-called destiny, right? He's supposed to be in a high stature in Jerusalem, but it did not happen. But he was still chosen in the end. In Daniel chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, let's go to Daniel 1, verse 3 to 4. It says there, Then the king commanded Ashpenes, his chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and of nobility. So stop here. Go back. From where? Royal and nobility. Look at this. They did not just choose a farmer, you know. Are you listening? These conquering people don't want farmers, they don't want plumbers, they don't want uh, construction worker, they don't want engineer even, you know. They don't want business owners. They want of royal family. Are, are, we, are we paying attention to this? You know why? God purposed it in his heart. Because the Bible says, Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. Remember in, in Jeremiah chapter 25? Nebuchadnezzar might not know what he's doing, but God in his sovereignty, he knew what will Nebuchadnezzar do. He took all the royal family and nobility. You know why? Because the lineage of David must continue on so that Jesus may come. Are we, are we following this? So I want us to understand this. You know, God, we, God does not make a mistake. Sometimes we tell God, Lord, I'm in the wrong family. Some of us may say, I'm in the wrong family, I'm in the wrong country. Worse, huh? I'm in the wrong body. <laughs> God does not make mistakes. Amen. Amen. God does not make mistakes. It's either we will choose to follow God or we don't. Because you see, if you don't follow God, you know what? You're going to follow the devil, you know? There's no in-between. You know what the, the world is doing today? 
They're making our young people not choose anything. They're making our young people, you know what? Sit. Ah, use handphone. You know? For three hours. Four hours, five hours can like that, no? Parents control. Really? As long I'm I'm telling this myself as well, huh? As long that, we, that as long as we are in charge, take charge. If we don't take charge, you know what? The devil will take charge. That's why the devil is against father and mother, especially fathers. That's why the devil is always attacking the father. You know why? Without the father, there's no charge. <laughs> Amen. So that's why church take over, take control. Not, 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 not to be a controlling freak parent, but take control of their spiritual life. Take control of them. If they're doing nonsense, okay, let's send them for mission trip. Why not? Really? Why not send them two years? Okay, you go to mission trip. Blah. You don't want to listen to me. Go to Africa. Go to two years. See how blessed you are in Singapore. Because a lot of our young people don't realize how blessed they are. You know, We take it for granted so easy. But when you go to mission trips, our people are hungry for God. They don't have anything. But what they have is Jesus. And I'm always humbled. You know, when you go for mission, for mission trips, you'll always be humbled. Because why? These people who are so simple, you know what? They've got so much faith. When you listen to them, you, you get charged, you know. This June, I'm going to the Philippines. Those who want to come, let me know. Oh, wow. Well, nobody say amen, eh? <laughs> I'm going to the Philippines this June. About first week, from, from probably end of May to first week of June, we're going to do a mission trip there. What do we do? We are going to do leaders training. I'm going to do prophetic conference, evangelistic meeting, and uh, children's ministry. So that's what, what we did before, and we want to do it more this coming June. Amen? Because you know why? The more we involve ourselves in mission, when we see the world, when we see what God is doing across the nations, you know what? Lord, if you're doing it there, do it for Singapore. That's what we bring home. That passion for the souls, the passion for Jesus. Amen? So in Daniel, Daniel was taken off all that rights. And now he's, he's become a servant. Can you, can, you, can you imagine? I just want us to think about this today. We, a lot of us, most of you are born in Singapore. I'm not, right? Most of you are born in Singapore. Imagine eh, somebody, God forbid, okay, God forbid, something happened and you're taken out from Singapore to live and live in another country. And you now are the domestic helper, how? Huh? You see how we treat our domestic helpers? Sometimes we don't treat them well. What if you're in their shoes? Amen. Because we've ministered to domestic helpers in, in my previous church before and even here with my parents. Some employers don't treat them right. Sometimes they only eat once a day. Sometimes they don't even come out no day off. So can you imagine if things turn around, if God decides, okay, Singapore, now you go bottom. Ah. Uh, for your family, what are going to do? Go overseas and work also lah. <laughs> right? So I just want us to think about this. Because it's not about where we are. It's about Jesus in us. The hope of glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So in the book of Daniel, we discover that Daniel and his friends were taken. And it's not just Daniel. Um, let's, let's see. Verse 3. Sorry, verse 4. Let's go verse 4. Youths without blemish, a good appearance, and skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and competent to stand in the king's palace and to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. So when we look at this part, right, they were chosen from the noble family and from the royal family. You know what? Because they got education and and all these things. So it means they have this um, program, you know, to, to sift them, to have a test probably. We don't know. Next verse. The king assigned them a daily portion of food that the king ate and the wine that he drank. They were to be educated for three years. And at the end of the time, they were to stand before the king. Next verse. Among these were Daniel... Hananiah, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah of the tribe of Judah. Some of us may not know these names. Eh? Their, their name in Babylon is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But these are their Hebrew names. 
And, and it, it's interesting because among these were Daniel. means there's more that was recruited. Are we listening? More that was recruited. But only four people, especially Daniel, were highlighted. The rest of them probably ate the same food as the king, you know. But only the four of them. And when we, when we see this, and, and when we see God chose Daniel, not because he's an ordinary man, because he's a competent person that God has chosen. So may I ask all of us, when God calls us to our destiny, to our destination in the future, when God is calling you today to serve God in different capacity, how competent are we in what we do for Jesus? Right? So as we progress ourselves to what God wants us to do, you know what? You will be chosen by God. He will not pass you by because you're the right person for the right task. Hallelujah. So I'm going to talk about four points that I've learned while I was reading this. What is the quality of dedication Daniel and his three friends carry? Because you see, the dedication means the quality of being dedicated or committed to, to a task or a purpose. That's where the word devotion came from. Or rather, devotion is split to your devotion, your devoted, your dedicated. So I want us to understand that when we are doing our devotion, when we are reading our Bible, when we're worshiping God, you're not just coming there, sitting down, doing my devotion. I do my devotion today. I did one chapter. I, I worship God one hour, finished already. No, it's not like that. Devotion is a lifetime's pursuit. Can you tell your neighbor? Devotion is a lifetime's pursuit. Amen. Because why? You know why? Because Jesus dedicated his life for you and I. Can I hear an amen? amen? Very weak amen. amen. You know, God requires of our heart because God gave his heart first. He loves us first. Hallelujah. So there's four points I want to share and go through the word and later we'll pray and um, worship and we'll ask God, Lord, strengthen us. Number one. Daniel and his friends refused to be defiled. Verse 5 to 8. Let's go to first verse 5 to 8. Verse 5. The king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate and of the wine that he drank. They were to be educated for three years, and at the end of that time, they were to stand before the king. What was given to them? The best food, the best wine, the best lodging. But you know what happened? Verse 6, among these, Daniel, verse 7, and the chief of the eunuchs gave them names. Daniel, he, he called Belteshar, Hananiah called Shadrach, Mishael called Meshech, and Azariah is called Abednego. Verse 8, but Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief of eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. You know why? Why did, why did Daniel um, refuse the food? He refused the food because it's not kosher. <laughs> Different diet. <laughs> you know why? Because in, 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 in Hebrew context of eating food, they cannot eat seafood. They cannot eat um, other than fish that has scales. They cannot eat pork. They cannot eat duck. They cannot eat all these things that we eat. <laughs> and you know what the custom is? When they prepare meat, the, the blood must be drained. That's the, the, that's the Hebrew way of preparing food. That's why it's kosher, certified. All these must be cleared. So for Daniel, being having the wisdom of God, he does not know how they prepare the food, and probably he saw one lechon there, crackling pork. Wow, this one I cannot eat. But some of us, we go there, wow, king's food. Come on, let's makan together. Right? But to Daniel, I don't want to defile myself. You know what, what this represents? The food represents the world, the desires of the world, the temptations of the world. What does the drink uh, signify? The intoxication of the pleasures of the world. Amen. You know what? The pleasures of the world, it's, it's, it's a very, very quick gratification. It will not satisfy you 
It only satisfy you for, probably for a day, for a month, for a week. But it will not satisfy your soul. That's why the Bible says, Lord, you satisfy my soul. Because only God can satisfy us. So that what's, what, that's the representation of the food and the representation of the wine, the best wine. And sometimes it's so hard for us to say no to the world. Sometimes we love the world more than we love the presence of God. Sometimes we love spending time playing games rather than being in the presence of Jesus. Sometimes we enjoy good food more than fasting and prayer. Most of the time, right? So I want us to understand, you see, many of us once oh, want a, the anointing of Daniel. But do we have the same resolve as Daniel? Because what did he do? He refused to be defiled. Amen. Remember that there were others that the Babylonian people brought to the land of Shinar. Many people, not just Daniel and the three boys, huh? many other Hebrew people came to Babylon, but only the four of them refused. Probably the other three boys, huh? probably Daniel is the elder brother. <laughs> he, this is the ringleader, this three follow him. Probably, we don't know. Maybe they're good friends. Maybe in the, in the same clergy, we really don't know. But can I tell you this, church? Your association will de define who you are. If you associate yourselves with people who don't commit their lives to Jesus, you also will not commit your life to the Lord. If you associate yourself with people who do not know how to worship God, you are a stranger in the presence of God. So that's why church association is very, very important. Especially in this time in the season where we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Crypto uh, currency is going up. I don't know when will it crash, but it's going up, right? A lot of things are going up. A lot of people pulling their finances. We don't know what's going on. But Jesus knows. God knows the beginning from the end. Or rather, from the end from the beginning. Amen? So today, church, I want us to have that conviction. Like Daniel, even though we were taken away, he refused the world. Can we tell ourselves today as we are walking with Jesus, Lord, help me to refuse the temptations of the world. Because it's so easy for us to say yes to the world, and it's so hard for us to say yes to Jesus. Can we reverse that? Because Daniel showed an example to us that even though he was taken of his, pro of his destiny, even though he was taken out from his privileges, but he still said, I do not want to be defiled. Amen. Number two, Daniel has a resolve. In verse eight, don't move, but Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food. Question is, what is your resolve walking with God? Do we have resolve with our commitments, promises, and covenants made with God? I want to ask this question today, church, because you see, resolve only, rather, boldness comes when we have resolve from our hearts, having that stand that Jesus is the center of my life and God is the highest among the high. Amen? Because if we do not make that resolve, you know what? Boldness will not manifest. That's why a lot of us are not bold. Because we don't have resolve in our hearts that Jesus is King. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Savior. That's why a lot of us shy away from sharing the word of God because we do not resolve from our hearts that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. Can I hear an amen? amen? So church, today I pray that even as we hear this, that we learn from Daniel, that we can resolve from our hearts, Lord, I choose you above everything else. Because we can have our businesses, you know, we can have our jobs and all these are good, you know, to sustain ourselves, the profession that we work hard towards, but be, but be sure where God is calling you. Don't just work just to have money. I mean, we need money, we need finances, even in ministry, we need finances. But if this finances does not propel us to follow Jesus, then what's the point of having money? The Bible says, do not store treasures on earth but store treasures in heaven. Amen? That's why let's ask Jesus, Lord, give us finances that we can use this for your kingdom. Give us finances so that we can push forward what you're doing today. So that your kingdom may be established on earth as it is in heaven. It's not just for me to be rich. Because the Bible says, 
don't store riches in on earth. Hallelujah. Because again, boldness only manifests when we have a firm resolve. Hallelujah. And you know what? Growing up, when I was um, in high school and in college and in coming in Singapore, many people discouraged me uh, to serve God, you know. Many people said, ah, why are you serving God? You're so young. You can go to the corporate world. You can do this. You can do that. You can do so many things. But in my heart, I know that I must serve Jesus. Of course, not all of us are called for full time. But what I'm saying is, what is your resolve in your stand with God, where you are right now? Because otherwise, the world, if we do not choose today, the world will choose for you. If you don't choose today, you know what? Your friends will choose for you. If you don't choose Jesus today, you know what? The devil will assign an agent to come to you and to, to manipulate you and come out from the call of God in your life. God gave them favor in the sight of the chief of you. Now, what happened when Daniel made a resolve? Let's go to verse um, 9. Let's continue. And God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of of the chief of the eunuchs. You know why? Because Daniel chose Jesus. Daniel chose God. God gave him what? Favor. Sometimes, you know, we're having difficulties at our workplace, even in relationships, even with our spouse, even with our children, even with our friends, perhaps. But you know what? What will resolve all these that you really want this relationship? Have Jesus in it. Amen. When we have Jesus in it, you know what? God will give us favor in the sight of the people around us. Hallelujah. So, and when I was reading this, I'm just very appalled that even though Daniel was in this place where he doesn't have control, eh? even though he's in the place where it's, it's, it's very uncertain, should I follow, should I not follow? But you know what? He made a stand. I will stand with Jesus. And you know, today... There's a lot of prophecies that, that will come, or rather there, was, there has been said that there's a coming virus more than COVID and all that, and we're going to go through this again. How are we going to stand as a church? How are we going to stand as an individual? I think that we have to answer for ourselves. I mean, number three, Daniel was bold to challenge the norm. You know what happened? Verse 10 to 16. Let's go to verse 10. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king who assigned your food and your drink. For why should he see that you were his worse condition than the youths who are of your age? So you would endanger my head with the king. Oh no. Because Daniel, you know, rebel. Huh? <laughs> I don't want to follow. I want to eat my vegetable. He likes vegetables so much. Verse 11. Then Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief of the eunuchs had assigned over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, verse 12, test your servants for 10 days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. we we'll stop here first. Because Daniel chose to follow God, because he had a resolve in his heart, then he became bold. Please remember this. A lot of times we wonder, how come I'm not bold? How come I'm not bold? Because you've not written in your heart yet that Jesus must be the master. A lot of times I'm still the master, you know. A lot of times you are still say, oh Jesus, you're my master, but outside church, I still choose what I want. I still choose my, 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 my direction. I still choose where I want to eat. Of course you can choose what you want to eat. Lah. <laughs> but I still choose the direction I want to take. No wonder sometimes we find ourselves unfavored by God. God's grace is there, but favor might not be there. That's why church is very critical today that we know that God is with us. So, you know, Daniel, he, he was so bold to challenge the eunuch, you know. It's not just an ordinary eunuch, it's the chief of eunuch. High position. He never even beg. He never say, please. No, no, no. Test us for 10 days. Do we have that boldness, church, today? That we can stand in the presence, not our enemies, huh? the presence of the people around us, and we can say that Jesus will come for me. Amen. 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 Some young people say, huh? 
Oh, I cannot have children because I don't have enough money. No, no. If God wants you to have a child, have a child. Amen. Because sometimes we are challenged by the standards of the world. Are we, are we listening? We are challenged by the standards of the world that I have to have one, two, three, four, five in order to have a family. But if it's your season to have a family, young people, have a family. If it's your season to grow, grow today. If it's your season to study, study well, like Daniel. Later, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. Amen. Because otherwise, we, we're always missing the boat. Remember Pastor Stephen Francis, he shared about don't miss the boat. When God comes, make sure you're there. Make sure you're there. Because you know why? Let, let, let me give everybody a, a light nudge, all right, if I can put it this way. <clears throat> a time will come when God's outpouring will come in this church. If you're not ready, somebody will replace you. If you're not ready, God will bring people of passion, people of competence to replace you and even me. Are we listening? Because when God comes, He's not a respecter of men, you know. His plan must move. Amen. You know when God split the Red Sea, eh? it cannot be somebody still pooping there, you know, <laughs> doing some business. No, no, we got to go, we got to go. We got to cross the Red Sea. If somebody is left behind, eh, too bad, lah. You go, you balik kampung to Egypt. <laughs> correct, correct or not? That's why don't miss the season. Especially young people. If you, it's your time to go to work, work. Work hard. If it's your time to have children, have children. You know why? You know why? Because you see, in your 50s, if you're still taking care of small children, then you miss the season already. Instead of in the 50s, you have wisdom, you still have strength, Instead of running, you know, with young men, you know what? You're, you're slowed down by a little person. Now, are we paying attention? Because we don't honor the seasons of God. You know, we honor the standards of the world more than the seasons of God. That's why we wonder, Lord, how come I'm not anointed? Because you don't honor the season of God. So today, church, may my hearts be awakened today. Lord, may I know the seasons of my life. May I know the seasons of your move. Otherwise, I'll miss the boat. How many of us don't want to miss the boat? Don't want, huh? Simple English, huh? <laughs> we don't want to miss the boat. We don't want to miss the move of God. So let me give us a, a light nudge. Please do not miss when God comes and moves. Because a day will come. The day will come when He will pour His Spirit like never before in Singapore. And especially in this location. And if we are still sleeping if we are still having a lot of conspiracy, and if we still like to gossip, we still like to do what we like to do, you know what? You miss the boat already. You miss the day of the visitation. And some of us, okay, I don't want to come on Sunday today because I'm tired. I've got things to do. You know, in the book of, of, of Acts chapter 2, before that, 500 people saw the ascension of Jesus, but only 120 people were there to receive the outpouring Hallelujah. And may, may our lives be not like that. Amen. Because when Jesus moves, He moves, man. He will not wait for no man. When He comes, He will not ask you first, no, send you email. Hey, I'm coming tomorrow. Ah. Prepare, repair. Ah. No, 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 no. Jesus won't do that. Amen. And what, what happened to Daniel and his friends? Let's, let's read. Where did we read just now? Verse 13. Or oh, 14. So he listened to them, the chief eunuch, in this matter and tested them for 10 days. Verse 15. At the end of 10 days, it was seen that they were better in appearance. And what? Fat in the flesh than all the youths who ate the king's food. Don't know what kind of fat. Lah. Maybe a big stomach. No, no, shouldn't be, right? You see, even though, because God, God is not speaking to us in terms of food, you know. He's speaking to us whether we will consecrate ourselves for Jesus. And what happened? They look better in appearance and fatter in flesh than all the youths who ate the king's food. Probably, they may be eating the food, but you know what? The training, uh, so stressful. 
<laughs> you know where they train what? They train what? Language, the, 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 the things in the palace. They need to learn all these things. They're not very stressful. But what did the guys do after the training? Probably eat until their heart's content. Eat and eat, drink and drink. But these three boys made sure they are pure. So uh, may I implore to all of us today, wherever we are, the professions you're in, the calling you're at, don't defile yourself. What, what did Jesus say about defilement? Jesus said, you're not defiled by what you eat, but what you say. Are we listening? Are we listening? The more you say and talk about people, you know what? It defiles you. Yes? So church, in, in, in these last days, be careful of your tongue. Be careful. Because you know what? That's the bait, one of the bait of Satan, the snare of the enemy. He will use your tongue. To, to do what? Talk, to, to talk about people. Talk about this organization. Talk about this church. Talk about this. Talk about that. You know what? It defiles you. And then when you look inside, I'm not pure anymore. You know what? Because your mouth is defiled. That's why Isaiah said, Lord, I'm a man of unclean lips. He did not say I'm a man of a unclean heart. He said unclean lips because he recognized that defilement came when he spoke things that is not of God. So be careful. You know what? The, the young people, the last youth that I shared, can you believe it or not? I was sharing with the young people. You all remember or not? Joshua. You all remember I said, words has... No, nah, you're very mature. I'm teaching you. <laughs> words are power. Yes, I'm like, words got what? And, huh? Ah, Joshua, power. Words has meaning. Please watch this, parents. A lot of young people today don't know the meaning of words. They mix and match words. Oh, this one can, this one cannot. They don't think through the things they say. That's why we have to teach our children words has meaning. A man is a man, a woman is a woman. Full stop. That's meaning. You cannot change it. So as the sky is blue, the clouds are white or sometimes black, those cannot change. Amen? Because the world is confusing words nowadays. We can say whatever we want to say. We say things loosely that we don't mean. You know why? It, what, you know why the devil is after the tongue? Because life is, and death is in the power of the tongue. So if we don't guard the tongue, it defiles you, number one. Number two, you know what? You're releasing either life or death. So that's why the devil wants to steal your tongue. I mean, so what happened to Daniel and his three friends? What happened to them? They received supernatural health. It cannot be, you know, it cannot be I'm just eating vegetable, but I look stronger. You're fatter. You know what happened? Because they followed, they followed God. They followed the ordinances of God. You know what? They received supernatural health. You, wanna, you want health in your body? Follow Jesus. Don't defile your soul. The more we talk, the more we gossip, you know what? It goes through your system. And then it creates problems. Number four. Number one is Daniel refused. Number three, Daniel resolved. Number, I'll try to, number three, Daniel was bold. And number four, Daniel and his friends are trustworthy. What are they trustworthy? They are trustworthy with the gifts and talents God has given to them. Let's go to verse 17. Verse 17. As for these four youths, youths meaning a young, eh? young, right? God gave them learning and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel ha had understanding in all visions and dreams. Okay, we stop there first. May I ask us a question today? What is stopping you from serving God? Let's have some, a little bit of check and balance. What is stopping you from serving God? Nothing. Nothing stops you, you know. Because you see, God has given us time. God has given us the strength. Yes, the season might be difficult today, but that does not give us an excuse not to serve God. It may be in church. It may be an outreach. We cannot be everywhere at the same time. But be faithful to what God has given to us. Right? Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, very quiet. Huh? 
Because you see, God will not give us the skill if we don't say yes to Him. You see, this, this very important statement here, as these four youths, God gave them. The Bible did not say from the beginning, God gave them all these gifts, you know. Only when Daniel dedicated himself to God, when he dedicated himself and consecrated himself before God, and he followed the ordinances of God, you know what happened? God gave them the skills. I mean, some of us, maybe God is calling you to write, God is calling you to, to preach, or God is calling you to sing, then invest your time. Some of us, maybe God call you to sing, but you're not investing your time, you're not going for lesson, you're not going for course, you're not going for this, then how to be a good singer? Amen. Because it's a simple illustration is this, you see, they were chosen already because they're excellent, right? But God promoted them even further because God gifted them with skills. How many of you want to be gifted? And let's, let's erase this mindset today. The more skillful I am, uh, the more ar arrowed I become. Arrow means, those who do not understand, arrow means, uh, what's the meaning? Uh? Push the work to you. Pick on you. Uh -huh, pick on you. So, you know, when sometimes a very skillful person uh, is very on demand, they always call. Because you're very talented, ma. call you, call you, serve, 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 serve. Right? But in that season of serving, you're learning. But when you're in a season of maturity, then you know which to choose. Okay, I choose this, I choose this, I choose this. Then I'm going to serve. I'm, I'm not serving for everything. When I was younger, when I was a teenager, you'll find me everywhere. I uh, was in this conference, I'm serving here, I'm playing guitar here, there I'm cleaning, here I'm leading worship, and then there I'm sharing the word of God. Teenager until my, probably 24, 25 years old, I'm everywhere. Singapore conference, I'll be playing music, I'll be playing worship, I'll be helping out. You know why? Because I'm available. I have time. You know? I'm serving, I'm working, but I'm available. So I, I allowed myself to be used by God, you know? So because of that, I acquire many skills doing all these things. So you see, we have different seasons. That's why I said earlier, honor the season God has given to you. Amen. And then what happened here? When God gave them the scale, verse 18, at the end of time, when the king had commanded that they should be brought in, after three years huh, of uh, doctorate study, <laughs> and the chief of eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, verse 19. And the king spoke with them, and among all of them, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they stood before the king. Verse 19, we, we stop here first. You know, when God gives us the skill, what do you do with the skill? What do you do with <clears throat> the ability God has given to you? Because it cannot be, you see, sometimes we always wishing, I, I wish I can sing like this. I wish I can be like that. I wish I can preach like this. But if you don't invest your time to be good in what you do and what God has given to you, God will not promote you. Impossible. The world, you know, for music, because I'm a musician, I'm a worship leader, it cannot be that Taylor Swift and her crew uh, is so fantastic and they're in Singapore, uh, by the way. Tonight is the concert, don't go. <laughs> you, you see, oh, no more idea. Wow. I'll finish yesterday, last day. Oh, yeah, that's why. Okay, no more, praise God. <laughs> You see, it cannot be that the world is so good with what they do. The music, the sound, the light, the, the ushers, the welcoming people. You know, they sit there, they watch the concert, the smoke machine. Everything is fantastic. It cannot be, eh? Offering to the world is better than offering to God, you know? Of course, we do not. Later next Sunday, you see smoke machine here. No, no we're not going to do that. <laughs> no, no. I, I don't like it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> they talk about lights flashing. <laughs> lights we can do. This one all capable, but we, we don't we don't do that. Right? This is not club, huh? it's church of God. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, how come they are so good and when it comes to God, it's okay. This one okay lah, huh? that one okay lah. Huh? That's why God does not promote us. You see? You see, Daniel, even he was robbed 
from his position as a royalty, from the lineage of David. He was taken from that, but you know what he did? He still did his best. He still was excellent in the sight of God and in the sight of the king. Therefore, the king found favor in him and them, the people. Verse 20. And in every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters that were in all his kingdom. Amen. You know, church, as, as the body of Christ uh, in JMK, we just talk about JMK, lah. don't talk about the world. Too big. <laughs> That's Singapore. When, wherever you are located today, where, whichever profession, whichever job and vocation you're at, be sure to be the best. Because that's the determination, you know, that God's hand is on you. Don't be a second person. Don't be the, the third-rate person in that company. Be the very best. You know why? Because best people, good people, will always stand beside kings. That's what Proverbs say. Amen. Don't give nominal work. Don't give okay. And then sometimes I wonder, we give the world the best. When they come to church, we give God less. No wonder our anointing is also less. Do you know that we can still have more of the presence of God here? So much more. But God does, cannot just have one person praying, you know. Cannot just have a few people praying and asking God. Therefore, come for prayer meeting. Come, let's, let's come and gather together. Because it, it cannot be, you know, God will come in when people are not praying together. There's always a time to pray. Then when we come together, Lord come and He will manifest His presence. Hallelujah. And when I read the scripture, I'm just amazed. Wow. Because they honored God, because they serve God, because they put God first, they become excellent and even ten times better. That's why students, when you're having exam, don't skip prayer. Don't even skip coming to church, please. Parents, you know what to do. Because <laughs> it's also a challenge for me next time I, my, my girls grow up, you know. I'll make sure they'll come to church. I don't care. You study later. Because children will say, yeah, Sunday I'm studying. Morning, they're really studying, man. Sure, use phone one. Sure. Sure, 100%. Eat breakfast slow, I'm sure. I don't kid you. Oh, Sunday, I don't come. I want to study. You know what? They wake up at 11. Slowly. 11 is early, you know, for youngsters today. They wake up at 2, 3 p.m., you know. Terrible. Parents, please don't allow this. What are we doing? I'm, I'm, I'm very serious. Parents, don't allow this in your house. Because if, if we allow kids to grow up like this, uh, you're not teaching them discipline. Only discipline in school, but in church, there's no discipline. How is it possible? And we want God to come, you know. We want to honor God, honor God with the time. Teach them how to encounter God in a secret place. My wife does not need to know I'm praying, you know. I don't need to tell her I wake up sometimes, I come out, I pray. No, don't need. Because that's my secret place with God. And parents, I want to encourage us, as long as our kids are under our roof, teach them the ways of God. Don't be pulled away by the world. Don't be pulled away by the, the, the elusiveness of the world's pleasures. But have Jesus. And tell your kids, without Jesus, we are nothing. Amen. Amen. Really, really. We can choose the world. We can run after the world. You know what the world will give you? Sickness. You work so hard for the company. You know what the company will give you? Thank you, no. Thank you for serving the company for the, next, uh, for the rest of the 40 years. What happens after that? Because you work so hard, you don't sleep and all that. What happens? You go to hospital. What happens to your saving? Go to hospital. <laughs> it really, really, it happens. I've seen this so many times. How come we're not learning? We see it so many times, you know. We see so many examples, yet we still don't follow Jesus. I mean, I'm, I'm sharing this because this is the discipline of Daniel, you know. We are studying about the life of Daniel, the revelations from the book of Daniel, but we have to understand who is this Daniel God used in the Bible. He chose God above everything else. He chose Jesus. He chose God more than the nice food and the riches of Babylon. Amen. Very tempted to share more about Daniel, but we, I'll leave it to Pastor Barnabas. 
And you know what, what I'm, I'm amazed here? He found them 10 times better than what? Who? Magicians and enchanters. Who are the magicians and enchanters now? Or what? Your handphone. Your handphone can do magic, no? You can do work. You can be anywhere in the world. You can have chat. You can have everything. You can get your job done. You can search things out. It's amazing. Amazing technology. But is handphone better than you? Can handphone replace you? But if handphone can replace you, uh, problem. <laughs> Means we lose our job. But what I'm trying to say here today, church, is that be an irreplaceable asset where God brings you. When you're not there, the company feels it, you know. Means you're doing a good job. Are we paying attention? Amen. So what, what, what we desire as a church, we want to raise the standard in this house. We want to raise the standard of serving God. We want to raise the standard of honoring Jesus and serving Jesus. You know why? Simply because He's worthy. Is that enough? Is that enough, church? That's enough. Because Jesus gave Himself anyway. And you know what? When I was praying, and I'm going to conclude, when I was praying with um, Crystal, uh, we are praying for um, Edith, our daughter. The Lord revealed something to me about prayer in Matthew chapter 6. I'm just going to share very, very briefly. <clears throat> and while in prayer, the Lord spoke to me. Remember Matthew chapter 6 when I teach my disciple how to pray. How did I introduce prayer to them? And I was just in my mind, okay, I'm going through that. You know, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus introduced prayer not as, a, not as a tradition, not as an oracle, but he introduced prayer as a relational conversation with the Father. You see, he introduced prayer as this, our Father in heaven. Means I'm coming to God not a stranger, not a religious follower. I'm coming in prayer because I'm a son of God. I can ask him anything, as Jesus said, right? Ask him anything, and he'll give it to you when you abide in his presence. So church, you see, when we pray, when we worship, I'm not worshipping an empty ceiling, you know. I'm not worshipping the white, white uh, paint. <laughs> I'm worshipping a true and living God. My father, my daddy in heaven. So that's the introduction of Jesus. My father, our father in heaven. And in the second one, hallowed be your name, really struck my heart so deep. Hallowed be your name. I've shared this before, but there's a deeper layer in this scripture where the meaning of hallowed means consecrated and set apart. It means when we pray, you are not only my father, your name is hallowed. It means to me, you are irreplaceable. Listen to this church. The Bible says in, in, in Leviticus, in Numbers, that certain um, instruments, certain items are consecrated, right? Consecrated means set apart for one purpose. Purpose of what? Honoring God, to serve God, to, to help the priest, right? So when God calls for consecration for the whole Israel, for what? To meet with God. Are we listening? Means their thoughts, their mind even cannot sleep with the spouse, you know? That's the consecration God required the people of Israel in the desert. Consecrate for three days, I'm going to meet with you. And the word consecration, hallowed, is the same in the prayer. Hallowed be your name. Which means God is requiring us to have a relationship that is not just, I'm set apart for Him, you know? If you take it personally, God is set apart for you. His name is set apart for us. Are we listening? Hallowed be your name. Means his name is set apart. His name is, 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 is the highest of the highest. Means I have to see God as the only one. Are we listening? Because if we see God now as my father, and I see God as no one else, then I can pray. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. No wonder when we pray, nothing happens. You know, kosong. Because we don't see it this way. That when I pray, my relationship must be there and my focus has to be one. Only with Jesus. You are set apart, Lord. 
Nothing can stand against you and beside you. Only you, Jesus. And you know what? You will see heaven coming down on earth. And even give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins. No, not even that. But when we understand this, we will understand the depth of salvation. When you understand the, the depths of prayer, you will understand the heart of God. So church, today, let's, let's purpose in our heart, Lord, teach us how to be like Daniel, to consecrate ourselves as you have consecrated your name for our sake. The Bible never say, or rather Jesus never say in the word that he taught angels how to pray. I don't think so angels can pray. Angels can assist Angels will do what they are commanded to do. They are, they are charged by God, but prayer is given to the saints. Amen. And that is one thing that the enemy is trying to steal from you and I. So church, I want to encourage us even more so this year. Let's commit ourselves in prayer. Let's come for prayer meeting. Let's commit that time. How is it possible that we can commit our, our time meeting friends how is it possible we can make our time doing extra work on a Friday night, doing a uh, party maybe, or having, you know, meeting and, and drinking? How is it possible when we can give that time and we cannot give it to God? When He's given us everything. Hallelujah. And the last uh, conclusion. <laughs> Daniel lived his life Fully serving God. You know, Daniel served four bosses, four kings. And all the kings found favor in Daniel. He served four kings, you know. And he has a reputation. He can interpret dreams. He's a wise man. And he sees vision. May all of us, you know, in, in our workplaces, in the corporate world as well, may people see that in us. That when they're going through things, they know they can count on you. They know that they can call you and you can pray for them. Because that is your Jerusalem, you know. That is your mission field. Amen. Amen. Your mission field is where you're working at. Pastor Barnabas and I may not be able to go to your workplace. You know, you're the pastor there. You're the prophet there. You are the evangelist there. So ask the Lord, Lord. Because you see, church... If we are not purposeful in our daily life, when we go to work, nothing will happen. It will just be the same old, same old. But why don't we start our day, Lord, my Father in heaven, you are holy or set apart. Lord, show me what I'm supposed to do today. Lead me to the people who needs me. And then, you know what? God will open up the door for you. Why? Because God is a loving God. He can count on you. The question is, can God trust us? Because you see, Daniel is trustworthy. God knew Daniel will keep up with what is required of him. Amen? Shall we all stand in the presence of God?